640 right now. So it was 45 years ago this week the body of Joe Campos Torres was pulled from Buffalo Bayou. Bayou. Uh, Torres, a Vietnam vet, 23 years old at the time, was arrested at an East End bar for disorderly conduct. He was severely beaten by Houston police officers and then tossed into the water. For the very first time, Torres' youngest sister, Sandra, is talking only with our Zach Lajway about her brother's murder. In the backyard of a home in Second Ward, where the family of Joe Campos Torres lives today. He was found on Mother's Day. His youngest sister, Sandra Torres. Injustice. Opens up for the first time. I wouldn't wish this for any family. Since her brother was murdered in 1977, Sandra was just eight years old. I was with my parents. We were at the movies, at the theater. This is when the family got the news. The body pulled from Buffalo Bayou was 23-year-old Vietnam veteran Joe Campos Torres. Known as the hole, this is where Torres was beaten and then dumped into the bayou after he was arrested by HPD officers for disorderly conduct. And then they said, let's see if this could swim. As Torres fought for his final breaths in the water, Officers yelled racial slurs at him from the banks, according to Sandra. My brother needed care. He fought for his country. And look what they did to him. Two arresting officers were charged with Torres's murder. Both were found guilty of negligent homicide. An all-white jury sentenced the officers. One year probation and one dollar in fines. So that's what my brother's life was worth? One dollar? Three other HPD officers were fired from the force, but not charged. Because of it, <laughs> did you live in fear? Not at the time when I was younger, but as I got older, yes. Are you resentful toward police? I mean, what good does it do, you know? This photo, taken months after the murder, shows Margaret Torres, Joe's mother, speaking at a protest. In the crowd, Sandra. She's proud of her mom. On the one year anniversary of Torres's murder, a riot at Moody Park erupted. Four police officers and two Big Two News reporters were hurt. KPRC2 photojournalist Jack Cato recalling the moment he was stabbed while covering the riot. His reporter, Phil Archer, also hurt. Standing here today, four and a half decades later, mm -hmm. when you look out, can you see the chaos from that May Day? Clears the bell. We were surrounded by a contingent of the crowd. At one point, someone grabbed the cable of my ca that my camera was attached to my camera, the power cable, and yanked it off my shoulder. And I just managed to say, "Stop that! You can't do that!" And I caught a brick in the face, and I was out from then on. While Archer was unconscious, he was stabbed in the abdomen. He came to as he was receiving aid. Do you think his case changed police relations within communities? You know, I could say a little, a little, you know. I always wondered what would life be? How would it be if we had a brother here? If my mom had her son, how would life be? Margaret Torres will turn 88 this year. Sandra says her faith is what gets her through. Of Margaret's nine children, six of them, including Joe, have passed away and as we know just last month the city dedicated a park a trail and a plaza in joe's honor joe campos torres plaza so his name will never be forgotten absolutely we appreciate sandra opening up about yeah, what was absolutely. a very excruciating uh, moment in that family's yeah. history thank you zach